Who is Richard Cromwell? He is history itself. The first human born in outer space. His birth marked the end of the golden age of space exploration. The new age came to be known as the colonization era. The moon colony was established and not long after, the first murder in space took place. In the AI wars, Earth's economy collapsed. Entire continents were left without energy and information. A planet-wide ban on artificial intelligences was put in place. At just 10 years old, the legendary Richard Cromwell signed the Earth Sector Convention. One boy symbolizing an entire people's aspiration towards a civilized, peaceful future. Who was Richard Cromwell? He was my father. On the day I was born, he bought an Orbital Limited bond in my name. Today, it's worth 13,000 times its original value. The year was 2067, the year we discovered the wormhole. My father was appointed captain of Noah's Ark. To this day, I cannot forget the awe that ship inspired in me. It took off when I was 10. It was around that time that I decided I wanted to become an astronaut. I gained a dream, but lost a father. Once I graduated from the academy, I signed up with the Federation fleet. As it turned out, I joined at the worst possible time. OSEC, Orbital Limited, Aerospace, one after the other, the colonies of the mega corporations seceded. At the Academy, we could see where it was all heading. It was a strange war. People killing each other took all the money they had earned and spent it together. The area around Mars became a battleground. It was not our war. We were no more than foot soldiers. Outer space is a calm place. My ship was hit in an encounter near Phobos. And for 10 Earth years, I orbited the red planet in a cloud of space debris. Below me, the Martian war was raging. I could only stare, my eyes frozen to glass. That they finally found me is nothing short of a miracle. They rescued me and reanimated me. No one seemed to care which side I'd been fighting on. I became a war hero in a war that we ultimately lost. The whole of space has changed. The ISA has little authority beyond the orbit of the moon. Corporate fleets and illegal AIs control the outer solar system. With the boom in colonization, there aren't enough experienced captains to meet the demand. Space Tech made me an offer. I took it. Greetings and welcome, all you space captains. To a new Let's Play. Welcome to Let's Play Nexus, the Jupiter Incident. Alright, once again I would love to say that this was a wonderful game for my past that I enjoyed playing, but that's actually not true. I never really knew this game existed until, well, some years ago. And uh, I think it's quite a gem, actually. Kind of wish I had found it when it was first released, but alas, it was not to be considering, well, I like space games a lot. And this particular kind of space game actually uh, does a lot for me. Uh, it kind of... I mean, it, it isn't quite homeworld. It's not an RTS. But you do get to do some tactical stuff within space combat and all that. And that's, that's always fascinating to me because uh, space combat is usually dumped down quite a lot. 
It means basically just keep hitting stuff with big lasers until it dies. And you do do that in this game, but you get to be a little bit smarter about that. You a bit more involved. Uh, that said, we still need to get started on all this. Um, now, I have technically never finished this game, although I did try once, but then when I came to the final mission, the game sort of crashed for me, and I could never bring myself to finish it. And then afterwards I learned that the uh, original devs of this game tried to get a uh, crowdfunding campaign together to create a sequel, and I was quite for that, but unfortunately skinned. And uh, as far as I can tell, they fell well short of their goal. I'm kind of hoping they will still at some point get to create the se uh, a sequel or some game in this genre. Because it would be quite nice. Now, I will warn. The first few missions are mostly tutorials. So they will be quite slow. But uh, I can't really skip over them because, well, the game will not be. But also because there is some story involved with it. So, uh, yeah, the story is kind of important. Let's get into it. We'll start a campaign. And we'll play on... Well, let's be experienced. Don't think I'm quite quite good enough to do anything other than experience yet. If I ever will. Alright, that campaign already exists, so we'll just make it LP then. Fine. Gonna be tricky about that. Marcus Cromwell, Captain's Log. 0309-2111 We have left Earth Sector. Our destination is Jupiter. We face a journey of almost eight months. On the way, we're picking up two Space Tech cargo ships. They're waiting in orbit around the moon. I have been assigned as the leader of the convoy. 0509-2111 The two cargo ships have joined us. Their crews are minimal but the two captains could talk the rivets out of a bulkhead. It's going to be a long eight months. Fortunately, the Stiletto's 12th sister ship, the ISF Hawking, will be joining us. It's sailing under the ISA flag, but the captain, Francis DeLorean, is an old friend of mine. 0712-2111. I joined the firm three years ago. So much has happened since then. The Mars quarantine, the Ceres crisis. I wonder if this mission will be remembered as the Jupiter incident. Twenty-three, twelve, twenty-one, eleven. Like an early Christmas gift, the Hawking finally arrived, two days behind schedule. Francis hasn't changed. It's good to see the old man again. It seems I was tempting fate. This mission may yet be known as the Jupiter incident. Space Tech's spy satellites are broadcasting some alarming pictures. The Kisaki Syndicate's recent activities have generated a lot of attention. I suspect it's no accident that Francis is on his way there. It's reassuring to have the ISA on our side. O one o three twenty one twelve. The final briefing has arrived. Mission template: reconnaissance, espionage. The Kisaki Syndicate's technological prowess has the mega corporations running scared. According to our intelligence, the source of their revolutionary advances is the Shokenja Research Station in Jupiter Sector. Our task is going to involve surveillance of the station. It may even extend to sabotage or a hostile incursion, if those are our orders. Every corporation in existence would love to pry into the Syndicate's research data. The situation is tense. A confrontation is almost inevitable. 2004-2112. We have arrived at Jupiter Sector and will soon reach Europa. The convoy is heading towards the twin stations Sunflower and Michelangelo. We're receiving a code red from the base. It entails the highest level of corporate security measures.
Michelangelo Station hailing convoy TTC 24-7. You have reached the arrival zone. Welcome to Jupiter Sector. Thank you, Michelangelo. Convoy dismissed. I'm handing the ships over to you. I can't believe I'm speaking with the Captain Cromwell. They're all talking about you back at the station, sir. It's not often we get celebrities out here. Did you have a pleasant flight? Pleasant? That's not the word I'd use. The most exciting thing to happen in eight months was the toilet backing up. <laughs> Alright. The spaceships and, ob and objects under the player's command are listed to the left. All objects players cannot control are listed on the right. These may be neutral or hostile ships, space station, navigation points, platforms, etc. Friendly units are separated from enemy units. The T tail down. You can read information about the selected hostile neutral object on the right top right of the screen. By clicking the eyes, and you can check the mission objectives or reread the dialogues on the or the tutorials. You can pause the game with the space key anytime. You can issue commands when the game is paused. Yes, that will. I have transmitted the coordinates to each of the ships. Please stand by in the designated navigation area. Stay clear of the asteroids. We're on a level two alert. Minefields are active. I repeat, minefields are active. All right, let's just pause for a moment. Before the dialogue interrupts me again. Yeah, you were being a little bit begging for attention, aren't you? So, uh, we could be doing that, but yeah, we have everything we need here. I do like the aesthetic of this game a lot. It reminds me a bit of, uh, well, essentially of Babylon 5, actually. With the uh, rotating sections to simulate gravity on ships with engines both back and front. To make sure that the ship can actually move with weapons uh, posted on the uh, on these boom arms and various bits of tactical weaponry which i'm not entirely sure i can show now it's not giving me the option right now because we're not being uh, getting in combat but all right so what a grim dark future this is with mega corporations calling the shots Quite a dystopia we've made for ourselves. But at least Earth is peaceful, I guess. Michelangelo, we've got a code red. Yes, Captain, I know. We had an accident a few days ago that left four people dead, so the check-in protocols have been stepped up. The Sunflower is ready to receive you. Camera focus. If you left click on any objects except small ships in the target list on the right, the camera turns to that direction. Hello, camera. Double clicking on any object makes the camera jump to it and follow it. However, this camera can only be linked to already explored objects. If you double click an empty part of space, the camera is released. Zoom. You can zoom in or out by selected object by using the mouse scroll button or by holding both mouse buttons and moving the mouse. Camera rotation. You may rotate the camera by holding the right mouse button. If the camera is linked to the object, then it starts circling around to give an object. Cool. Talking to Stiletto. We're leaving the convoy and continuing our voyage to the ISA base. It's been a pleasure traveling with you, Marcus. Dog with us next time you're in the neighborhood. I'll be more than happy to give you a rematch. Maybe by then you'll have exhausted the last of your lucky streak. I might just take you up on that, Francis. Don't get your hopes up about the rematch, though. Stratagos is all about strength of tactics. Luck doesn't come into it. <laughs> we shall see, Captain. Until next time, Hawking out. Goodbye, Hawking. Well, to Stiletto. Thanks for the escort, Captain. Traveling with you was truly an honor. May our paths cross again soon. Stiletto, approach the designated nav point. This is the commands that can be issued to the ship can be found at the bottom of the screen. To issue a command, choose your ship, then click the command, then right-click the target. Now approach the navigation point. Some commands can only target hostile or friendly units. Some commands do not need a target. The selected command button is lit. The issued command button is blinking. The unavailable commands are carried out. The spaceship avoids obstacles automatically. A collision cannot occur. Well, that's good to know. So we need to go to Nav Point, yes, Michelangelo. We're calling Snail. 
Hey, Frank. We're heading for the Sunflower. See you in the canteen next week. Copy that. We can shoot the breeze over a couple of drinks. Maybe this time you'll stay sober enough to hold a conversation. Damn it, Frank, not over the radio. Or shall we discuss the time you challenged that lieutenant to a drinking contest and wound up stripping down to your luminescent frog shorts? Okay, okay. We'll talk about it face to face. Snail out. Just some nice friendly banter. I can see why the captain was a little bit bored of these uh, get not, or not, rot not bored, fed up with these guys after a few times. Alright. There's Michelangelo. Task complete. Sir, the Sunflower fighters have arrived. Sunflower patrol calling Stiletto. Do you read us? Please confirm. Encoding OK. We are receiving your patrol. Attention, Stiletto. The minefield protecting the Sunflower is active. We are escorting you in. Copy that, Stiletto. Copy that, patrol. You can start off now, we're going to catch up. Alright, reach Sunflower Base. Affirmative. These uh, little marks are the mines, I think. No, those are platforms, but... Over there is the minefield, so... That's something, this is quite a dense meteor field. Around Jupiter, but... Hold your position. We have reached the minefield. Aye, aye, sir. In position. F3 to just go to full stop. <laughs> Wait here until the sunflower deactivates the mines. I will. Activation completed. You may head for the Sunflower now. All right. Affirmative. Stiletto. Copy that, patrol. Boy, oh boy, what a day to be on patrol. The company has built at least 50 Stiletto-class vessels, and this was the first. It's like the big granddaddy of them all. <laughs> You're a pilot's pilot. Have you ever served on a Stiletto-class Corvette? No, sir. We only have two light Corvettes in the sector. Huh, Captain? Sir, aren't you the Marcus Cromwell? Feel free to come over when you're through with your duties. I'll have someone show you around. Thank you, sir. I'll do that, sir. Uh, sir, may I invite you for a drink in the canteen? I'd be honored to meet the great Marcus Cromwell in person. I mean, if you have time, sir. That is, I don't mean to impose, sir. It's just... With pleasure. I started as a fighter pilot myself. Oh. At least he's a nice man. Mm -hmm. Stiletto! One of the mines didn't activate properly. I've marked it for you. Get the hell out of there! Alright, so click the run away command F4, then right click the target you want to run away from. The run away from the active mine marked with red. And now we see the reverse boosters. And that'll have to do for this episode. Thank you all for watching. See you all next time.